Hello ladies and gentlemen. So this example of JavaScript continues on from the work that we have done with using if. I have copied here the same example that we developed when we were working on if and on lists and simply changed the list of images to a few seasonal icons. So when I press on next it moves me to the next picture and the next and the next among these icons. The list of images is here. It's an array as before. Next is a function. So when I press the button, when clicked, it calls out the next function, which checks if we are at the end of the array and if we are not yet at the end of the array, add one to the current, changes the image to the new current image in the list. Let's give it a check. I press next and next and next and next until eventually we are on the last one. Snowflake is the last in my list. There's an extra comma here which probably does not do very much. And Santa Claus didn't appear. What happens if I press on previous? Yeah, Santa Claus didn't appear. That probably is a typo. Yeah, look, Santa Claus with a capital C. Let's rerun this thing. Next. Can't have a bunch of Christmas image without Santa Claus, really. So, same as before. Previous works in the same way. So if current is more than zero, then we take one away. Uh, and then change the image so that when eventually current is zero, zero is the first in our list, then we won't take one away anymore, so we won't be going back any further that ima than image number zero. It would be a bit pointless going further back. Okay, so far so good, but continuing from here, I wanted to show how an animation is done. We'll start with something simple like a slideshow. Instead of pressing next or free previous, I'd like this thing to switch from one image to the next every couple of seconds or so. So to do that, we need a couple of extra new notions about what JavaScript can do. I'm going to create a function, we'll see later how we use it. I'm going to create a function that I will call uh, animate, like that, and we'll see what goes inside in a sec. And what else is useful to do? Uh, I'll rename my buttons instead of next and previous, that is going to be called go. And we'll call that one stop. And go, when I click on it, I want it to do animate. So on click, call the animate function. Yeah. Oh, and that is stop. I could call a stop function. So there will be a function for stop. Remember the words that are written on your button don't have to be the same thing as the name of the function you're calling. So the button called go calls the function called animate and that's fine. On click it calls animate and animate is here. And this one is called stop and on click it calls stop with a small s though. And stop is here. At the moment these things will do nothing but that's okay. We should be able to run this. The two buttons go and stop are here. Go calls animate, except that animate doesn't do anything, and stop calls stop, except that stop doesn't do anything either. What is that error message? Type error. I think the word animate is already used by JavaScript. I'm going to rename that anim. So go calls anim and nothing happens. And that's okay, it calls the function, but the function doesn't actually contain anything, so nothing happens. What I really want to do is I want animate to work so that every second, or maybe every other second, 
it calls next and then it calls it again and then it calls it again and so on. That will be my animation and of course that's irritating after a while so it's nice to have some way to stop it. Of course to move on from one icon to the next and the next and the next and the next I can use this that is already set up in there and that will work but for this kind of thing at the moment I don't really need previous and just to make this whole thing clear enough I'm going to remove this function because really it's almost the same as next anyway and in this thing we don't need it. Let's see how we get anim working. We do this by using what we call a timeout. We tell JavaScript count down a second or two seconds or whatever it is. It's counted in milliseconds, count really. Count down 2000 milliseconds and then do this. Timeout in JavaScript. So there is a method called set timeout. Oh, actually, it's not just timeout. There are some timing events, like it says here on W3 schools, to do things in time intervals. There's a set timeout. What that does is count down a number of milliseconds and then execute the function. But there's also a set interval, same as set timeout, they say which instead of counting down a time and executing it once, it counts down time and executes and then again so that you get, you know, every two seconds you're gonna have a next image, next, next, next. And that's the sort of thing we want. We want a kind of tick of the clock and on every tick of the clock your next image will come on. So we want set interval. I'll copy that and stick it in my animation in Replit. So set interval and first how many milliseconds do I want? Let's say 2000 milliseconds, 20,000 will we be waiting too long for it to take place. 2000 milliseconds, that's a couple of seconds, it's fine. Uh, and function, but actually no, what we want here is to name which function we want to do so that every two seconds what we want to do is call next. That's next without putting those brackets. We'll come back to that a little later. So that, that should actually do the job. If I press run and push the go button, go calls anim and anim sets that interval so that every two seconds we get the next image. Next. Couple of seconds. Next. Another couple of seconds. Next. It was slow at the beginning, wasn't it? And the two seconds don't count on it too much. JavaScript can get its timing wrong. I think it's got to the end of the array and so uh, and so to the end of the animation. So that's it. Anim works by calling a set interval. I can vary the speed of this thing. Remember that about the timing being wrong. If I put it down to half a second, you will probably see that it's a bit irregular. No, it seems to be to be to be going okay. Basically, you can't count, especially for short times. You can't count on the machine getting it getting the number of milliseconds totally right. But that seems to work so far. Although I get to the snowflake and it does nothing. It's a shame, you know, it would be nice to see it cycling all the way around and then back to the beginning again. And that's not too difficult to do. That's something that we can do by changing how the next function is working. Remember how the next function was working. So it checks current. It checks if current is too far. And if current is too far, it does nothing. It's only if current is small enough that it will add one that will move us to the next image. But what we could do is, if current plus one is smaller than max, then add one. But if not, 
then we're at the, at the max. We're on the last image in the list. And we want to go back to the first one. So I write else. And here I'll put current equal zero. So here my instructions give the system two alternatives. Either current is not at the end of my array list, in which case I add one, or else it is at the end of my array list, in which case I set it back to zero. Setting it back to zero will set the image back to the first one, to, to image number zero, which is the candlestick. Let's see, run this. I thought that um, uh, I'll slow it down a bit because I don't like those kind of things going too fast. Whoops, sorry, I pressed stop and then go. Yeah, one second and go and go and go and go. After the snowflake, yes, it's back. And we're gonna see it cycle and go back a couple of a couple of ways. That's it. Okay, okay, we've understood. Let's stop it. No stopping. I haven't implemented stop yet. I have a way around. If I press this, it's going to reload my thing. And because I haven't pressed go yet, until I press go, we won't get that distracting flash. Uh, but we need to have stop working. And stop. There is a special instruction which is clear interval. There is a clear timeout. Window dot clear timeout, timeout variable. Okay. Set interval. How to stop? Clear interval, timer variable. What's the timer variable? My var equals set interval and then clear interval, my var. Okay, so I could do my anim, I'll call it. Equals set interval. Like that, I've got this thing called anim. And in the stop function, I can clear it. It was clear interval my anim. Except I've got one more thing to do because variables in functions, the machine does not remember a variable from a function to another, like my anim. It will only remember that this variable it can be used across the two functions if I list it among available variables here. So that's, that's why I always make sure that I put the list of useful variables at the top. So I've got var image list, var max, var current equals zero, var my anim, and I stuck them all together at the beginning of the script. Like that, I don't forget how many variables I have and what each of them do. Sometimes here, if I'm really patient, we can also put in a comment by each image. Image list is an array listing all image files to use. And then what's max? Max is the length of the array used to cycle through the image list. Let's do this one. Current number of the image currently showing. And finally my anim. The in timing interval used by stop. So we have a list of all the variables in the program. Every one of the functions that are below can use those variables like my anim that is used here and also here and all the other ones current 
and max max current and image list that are listed in the variable list and used by the functions. Anyway, let's check that this is working. So if I press run, when I hit go, that starts my anim, which is setting the interval, counts down one second, and then counts down again, and again, and again, and each time calls next, and next, and next, and next. And if I press, press stop, it will clear the interval, which effectively stops the countdown. Now, if you have seen animations before used for banner advertising or that kind of things, you can have a, a stop and a go like this. Or sometimes what people do is they let the animation go for, say, five, six seconds and then they stop it. That's easy to do. As well as setting the interval here, I can do set time out, stop. Let it go for 12 seconds and then after 12 seconds no more animation we'll assume that our users are tired of seeing animation let's stop this now when i press go it will start anim which will start two countdowns one for a one second interval that will go next 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 every second and another one for a set timeout that will count down 12 seconds and then cause the animation to stop. So press go. Let's see our images go. Every second for a total of 12 seconds that will be a couple of cycles round and it will stop. Done. 12 seconds and then stop. The stop button still works. If I press go and I can press stop. You might think, well, why the button go? We could hide the button go. We could have the function go running here. I'll call go here. Um, right, the, the images are loaded and then the script is loaded and when the script has finished loading go is called and go starts the animation f off so when i press run i will load this loading this will cause the script to run and at the end of the script running the animation will go off of its own reference error go is not defined oh no oh yes it ah oh, no, no it's not called go it's called anim. It's called anim. And run. Well, the script lo loads, and at the end of the script, it calls anim, which gets the animation going for 12 seconds. So after 12 seconds of this, the animation will stop on the reindeer like last time. That's it. We now know how to do an animation. Right. I got another one ready for you, but one that is a little more complicated, but I wanted to show an example of animation going quite a bit quicker. I will provide the link to this one, and then let's step back, and I'm going to explain my other one. So here I've got this thing called Image Animate 1. When we run this one, it loads uh, this uh, snowy hill and when you press go it yeah it's my new year's uh, good wishes to you all wintry stuff i'd better explain what it's made of what well, like i said it's a little more complicated than the previous one because of the number of things showing and they show in successive ways and the uh, of growing and moving different places and the uh, uh, and, and so on. So first of all there's one, two, three, four images and their placement. Five with the hill. So there's that snowy hill at the back with 500 pixels and then there's the snowman oh, a width of zero so that when it's loaded the images are all invisible you see. 
Same thing with a fir tree. Snowman again? Oh, I've put the same one twice. I think I'm going to get rid of the second snowman. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight. I hadn't noticed this. Okay, hill, snowman, fur, and another one. It's fur one, fur two, I think. And finally, uh, the, the tree, which is the, the leafless one. Quick check which is which. The snowman is 10 pixels from the top, 10 from the left, so near the top left corner. This one is 10 pixels from the top and 200 pixels from the right. And this one is 150 pixels from the bottom and 100 pixels from the left. Fur one is this one, not far from the top, and 200 pixels from the right. From the right. <laughs> and this one is 150 pixels from the bottom, so 450 pixels from here, and 100 from the left. Finally, that tree is 200 pixels from the bottom, so higher than this one, and 60 pixels from the right, so 60 pixels from that edge. Why do I do left and right and top and bottom and so on? It's to actually get the placement moving in different ways, from the bottom versus from the top and so on. I will show you that in, in a sec. And Go calls a bunch of set timeouts each time it calls a set timeout after three seconds or one second or two seconds or even zero so that that one goes straight away. But if we wanted a fifth image or a sixth image or a seventh image or if we wanted, we, we wanted fewer, we just put in fewer set timeouts for the fewer images. It calls something with anim. We'll have to talk about anim in a sec. But the first thing I'm going to show you to explain this is change image. And change image does not change. Let's run this. Change image does not change uh, which image it is. It changes the image's size. How do I do this? I pick up the size of the image. So if we're changing an image called snowman, for example, it picks up the image snowman and picks up its width. Then if that width, that's the size, if that size is less than 100 pixels, then it adds 6 to that. So it increases the width from 0 to 6, and if it's 6, from 6 to 12, from 12 to 18, and so on, until eventually the size gets over 100, and then it stops. Finally, changes the width to the new calculated size. So pick up the size, add a few pixels, change the size to the new one. And that will change the size of the image. If it changes the size of an image again and again and again and again, then the image will keep its position from the top left or from the bottom right or whichever I set the position from. For example, the snowman is set at the top left. But do I have one that is set at the bottom right? The winter tree is set at the set from the bottom right so the, the snowman when the image is at its smallest is going to be in that corner from the top left and when it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger it will become bigger growing this way its corner in the, at the top left staying the same place but obviously the other side growing bigger and bigger this way while that tree is set from the bottom right so it will be somewhere here and then it will grow this way as the image becomes bigger and bigger and bigger but its bottom right corner remains in the same place compared to the bottom and right let's check what that is like go the winter tree grows from the bottom right at this move the other trees and the snowman grows from that top left which doesn't move but it grows out of there. About the animations themselves. So anim basically calls 
the interval every 100 millisecond, which is that it, the image will grow every tenth of a second. You can see that if I try to make it much quicker than this, the image is becoming a bit fuzzy, it has no time to show quick enough, so that if I make it even quicker than this, it will probably be even fuzzier, and JavaScript doesn't do these very well, or not with the way I did it here anyway. A little bit about the functions I used and how I wrote them. Starting with anif, with, with anim. Go back to an idea that I mentioned earlier, which is that if you write a function with the brackets, then which it, which is that you can write the function's name with the brackets or without. I could write go like this or go bracket bracket and it doesn't mean the same thing. When I put f here, it's the function. It passes the function, the information that is in that function to set interval, so that later the function will be called and executed. I can use the function, give it to give it to set interval as if it was a variable. In fact, I have used it as if it was a variable. I've done variable f equal a function that calls change image. Change image? Which image? The image passed to an im. Set timeout is set time is done with a function which calls an im snowman. After three seconds, this function will get executed. The function will call an im snowman. An im snowman will make a function to change the image snowman. And that will send it growing that image every tenth of a second. OK, it probably looks a little confusing, but the important thing is this. Once set up this way, it's not too difficult to change. Um, I like trees, so what if we actually put in another one of these? Um, here, this one, I think that's original and nice. Uh, I'll have another one of these. I think that was for two. So I'll just put in another one. Right, The file is for two to get the same as before, but I need to place it in a different place. Maybe another 20 pixels further up. And where do I have space? It could it could have the snowman hiding behind it. So we'll put it 80 or 60 pixels from the left, which will be not 160, not far from this one, but somewhere around here. Right, so far so good. I've got its place and everything, but I mustn't give it the same ID as the other one because the two IDs will get confused then. So that is for that is for two. That is so let's call this one for three. And now that I've placed my tree, I can just animate it. I'll just put in another set timeout there, and I will say for three. It could grow at the same time as one of the others, say after uh, one and a half seconds. It will pr probably be growing as another one uh, hasn't finished going. Let's see, press go. Yeah, they almost both grew at the same time. Fur and then fur two and for three and then for two in that order I think. Oh we won't see a thing because the images are already this size. I didn't see I want to adjust my images. But you can see that now that it has been set up it's easy to just adjust things and move a bit the timings and the speeds at which things are going and so on until we like the result.
that's it with this uh, with, with this example so there'll be links in the description of this video i hope you've enjoyed it and uh, happy new year